One more time for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is by uh, Bishop Ronald E. Brown. Y'all, 
change for Facebook Live. I don't change for my household and family. I don't change in Walmart. Good morning, Aunt Annie. I don't change in the midst of it all. I am who I am. I am a praiser and I love to worship the Lord my God. Hallelujah. So there's a storm brewing on the ocean and it's surely it's coming this way, and if your soul's not anchored in Jesus, good morning, Sister Pat, you will surely drift away. You know, that's a, that's a song. Now, we've got a warning, a category one warning here in uh, the state of Florida, Cape Canaveral, Coco, uh, Titusville, all of those things that the storm is coming. Oh, we went to sleep last night not really worrying because uh, there's a difference between a category one and a category five. Some of y'all maybe in your life right now is going through a category five. Uh, so I pray that this helps you, this message on today. Hallelujah, but we are yet, I'm looking outside, it's not even raining. Hallelujah, we prepare for the storm uh, because we don't know the effects of the storm. And you know God's hand can shift left, right. He can, he can go deep into the sea and, and, and bring it back. But, but we're standing here safe and sound. Um, I get to minister in my own office as always. And I'm glad that you all took the time to be on here with me. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am a Pastor Frida Thorpe. I am the overseer of Renewed Destiny Kingdom Ministries in Pennsylvania, Westland, Pennsylvania, 418 Westland Road, Westland, Pennsylvania, 15378. 15378. Good morning, uh, Sister Sharon. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, I also have the Church Without Walls here in uh, Brevard County, and that's just what it means, without walls. Hallelujah. Until God gives me um, a, 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 a set place to minister, I'll be ministering on here. Good morning, uh, Brother Patterson. Uh, uh, so uh, we've, been, we've been walking through this, talking through this cave experience. I hope you've been with me. If you haven't been with me, please take the time to go on to my YouTube page and follow up. Also, I have Frida Thorpe Ministries and Renewed Destiny Kingdom Ministries too. So you can always go on and, and catch up on what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the cave experience. And I tried to get off of it for a minute, but um, <laughs> I couldn't. So uh, maybe in the next couple weeks, we'll go to the next journey. But for right now, I'm still in the cave. I'm still talking about the cave. I'm still talking about storms. I'm still talking about all of those things that, that each and every one of you on here has experienced at some point in your life, if you're not experiencing it right now. Somebody say category one. <laughs> I mean category one. But the, the, I'm going to talk about today the voice throughout the cave, the storm, and the struggle. Uh, the voice throughout the cave, the storm, 
and the struggle. Let us pray. God, I thank you, Lord God, for a gracious morning. I thank you for meeting us here, Lord God, right here live online, Lord God, that, that we may not be in the sanctuary, but we are in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. I thank you that two or three or five or six are gathered together today. Uh, Lord God, to just bless you. Lord God, to hear direction from you, Lord God. Now send your word wherever, Lord God, we're watching from. Send your word, Lord God, to PA. Send your word to Ohio. Send your word to Africa. Send your word to Cocoa, Florida. Send your word to Merritt Island. Send your word, oh God, to Melbourne. Send your word, oh God. Lord God, send your word and heal what needs to be healed even on today, Lord God. Consecrate us. Help us to concentrate on you for the next 45 minutes, oh God. Help us to concentrate. Lord God, we give you the glory at the end of this story. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, good to see you all. Make sure you hit like and share. Make sure you hit the like button so that the word will go out a little bit more. People say it's for popularity. It's not for popularity. It's so that the word can go out to other people. They'll see it, they'll listen to it, and they'll be blessed. Good morning, Sister Leslie. Good to see you, Miss Missy. Um, uh, we're going to turn in your Bible, our Bible, to 1 King 19. We've been in Samuel. 1 King 19. I know I'm not in the picture, but uh, 19. 1 King 19. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 12 from the King James Version. Are you okay with that? King James Version. But whatever you're watching or you're reading from, it's good. It's good. And, it, and the word of the Lord reads like this. And Ahab told Jezebel that Elijah, what had, all that Elijah had done, how he uh, had slain the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a, a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by morrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. He ran for his life. And he came to Beersheba. Remind you of somebody from last week? David's been running, running, running. Now here is the prophet Elijah running, which belongs to Judah. Oh my God, they're in the same area. And left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And it is enough now, Lord, take away my life for I'm not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a, a cake baking on the coals whew, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. And he arose and he did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. And he came thither into a cave, uh-huh, uh, came into a, a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Uh, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down the altars, slain the prophets, uh, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. You know, pop-up popped up there. You know, there's some pop-ups in your life will come and interrupt the word. I ain't having it on today. Um, and he said, uh, let me read that again. I, uh, verse 10, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down the altars and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord and behold the Lord pass by. Oh, I love this scripture. Don't you? 
and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke pieces before the pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Huh. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord, somebody say the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. A still small voice. And I'm going to end at verse 12 right there. Please make it your obligation today to read the entire chapter if you don't have something that you have devotionally or whatever to read read first kings chapter 19 that's your assignment um today so um hurricane season again and for those of you that are in florida we have we have a hurricane warning that has been in place for the last couple days uh, in the places you call vacation, in the places that uh, the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and so forth, and Florida. It's home to me. With it comes all kinds of storms and things that uh, surround us. Uh, they, they predicted it. They put our state in a state of emergency, as before. And, uh, but, but we see the storm. Uh, it may be headed our way, but the important thing is to be anchored and anchored in Jesus. It is, it is the, this is hurricane season. So from, uh, I believe, June 1st to October 31st, we are always on alert for a storm coming. What do you do when you know that a storm is coming your way? What do you, what do, you do? How do you prepare uh, for the storm? I'm sure we'll have some part twos and threes about this, the storm because the hurricane season really just took a hold of us. Uh, we haven't had any threats before today, but we know what kind of damage the storm can do because of history, because of the things that we've already gone through and experienced last year, the year before last, and so forth. I've been down here for 11 years, going on 12 years, and we have experienced the hurricane. So when they warn us about a storm rising on the ocean, we get anchored down, we get hunkered down, and you need to get hunkered down in Jesus if you are. You see a storm coming, you know it's coming your way. We need to be prepared um, for that particular storm because uh, struggles, troubles, Hard times that threaten to knock you down will come wave after wave. And let me tell you something. If you're not planted, if you're not prepared, if you're not steadfast and unmovable and abounding in the work of the Lord, it will carry you out to a place that you never thought that you would go back to. It will carry you to a place where you look up and you won't see any seashore. You won't know where you are. You won't know where you're going. So we need to be where you could be doing fine one day and the next day you're holding on by the skin of your teeth. Have you ever been there? Uh, this is the story of, of, of a wonderful patriarch uh, in our Bible that we're going to visit today that can, has that testimony, uh, the, the great prophet Elijah. Uh, we, we know Elijah and we know Elisha, uh, uh, Elijah the Tishbite. Uh, earlier in the books of First Kings, he's introduced by uh, the time we get to chapter 19, he wins a big showdown. Read your Bible. It's very, it, uh, I mean, we talk about uh, boring. Church is not boring if we are really going through the word of God. If we are looking through the word of God and allowing it to minister to us, there are some juicy scenarios in this Bible. Uh, there's some dramatic and traumatic moments in this Bible. If you need um, if you need a, a drama, if you need, uh, uh, there's some horror stories in the Bible. Yes, there is. There is a little bit of this and a little bit of that. There's some comedy <laughs> in the word of God. Yes, there is. And so you need to grab a hold of your word and dig it back up. Dust the, uh, wipe the
the dust off of that Bible that's been sitting on your living room table for, for 30 years. Dust it off and start reading. Plunge into the Word of God and hear some of these awesome accounts um, that we that we talk about but in in in, in 18 I mean in, in the book of Kings first Kings he gets introduced okay and by the time he gets to uh, chapter 19 he already has won a big showdown and he challenged when he challenged 400 prophets uh, of Baal uh, he, he challenged them to prove whose God was the real God uh, a capital G-O-D versus small G-O-D. He, he challenged them. He stepped out on the stage and he asked the people, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? Good morning, Char. Um, how long are you going to stagger between two opinions? How long are you thinking you can get away with trying to serve two gods? It, it's time that you make up your mind uh, who you are going to serve kind of like some of us right we're hallelujah the Lord on Sunday and then curse those around you on Monday um, I know because I have experienced and seen this happen we're saved when we're with the saved people and we party when we're with the party people we gossip when we're amongst the gossiping people I, I heard a man say that listen my mom raised me to be comfortable on a church pew as well as a bar stool well, shame on your mama that didn't train us, hallelujah, in the ways of the Lord. We're like chameleons sometimes. We adapt to whatever environment that we're in. Uh, but, but how long are you going to be that way? How long are you going to be stumped between two opinions? How long are you going to sit in the middle and not make a decision? And, and this great prophet Elijah has come on the scene and he's challenging the people. And I challenge you also uh, today. If Baal be your God, then serve Baal. Come on now. Sir, if you big bad enough to serve Baal, then, then serve Baal. Uh, there's no special sections in hell um, for, okay, the gossipers are here and you get a front pew in hell uh, because you're just a liar. Or or you get another section because you're a, a thief. And, and and then there's the other, the, the hot, 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 hot place uh, for those that are considered murderers. Uh, uh, hell is just that. It's hot. It is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you won't go, you might as well go all the way. Hallelujah. But if you want to go to heaven and you want to choose God, hallelujah, then get in it. Get in it. Plunge into the, the, the presence of the Lord. Hit it out the box. Go all the way. Hallelujah. Go for it. God says, I would rather you be hot or cold. Um, if, if you're lukewarm, uh, he's going to spew you out. Lukewarm. So who likes lukewarm uh, coffee? Who? No, you get iced coffee or you get hot coffee. Who likes a, a lukewarm soup? It's a, that's a horrible taste. Uh, lukewarm. Uh, you need. We need to be hot or we need to be cold. He said he'll spew you out. Uh, heaven or hell. Choose heaven or hell. You want to be in heaven? You want to be in hell? How you doing, Gary? Um, heaven or hell? Up or down? Are you in or are you out? Are you on the left side um, with uh, the, the goats? Are you going to be on the right side with, with the sheep? Uh, Elijah preached a hard gospel and we don't hear that gospel too much anymore. We don't hear the gospel that there is a heaven and a hell. There's no in between. It's like choose ye this day who you will serve. And Elijah had enough boldness, hallelujah, to literally be able um, to call him out. Hallelujah, I'm calling you out today. Uh, are, are, you, are you going to be saved or not going to be saved? Are you in or are you out? Are you, are you, are, are you a Christian or are you an unbeliever? Who are you? What are you? Choose this day whom you will. So I'm calling you out just like that. Say it, Pastor Frida called me out today. And I got to make a decision because, listen, people are dying daily. Dying daily daily. 
Hallelujah. We're dying daily. And some people have gone into the hospital and two days later, they're gone. Choose you. You can walk out on the street and get knocked over by a car and your family, you never get to say goodbye or anything. Choose ye this day whom you are going to serve. Joshua said, as for me and my house, if you're going to stay up in my house, we will serve the Lord. We will. I've set a standard for my family. We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. He was like, Elijah was like that John the Baptist. He called a viper a viper, a snake a snake, a murderer, a murderer, uh, 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 an alcoholic, a drunk. He called it like it was. Hallelujah. Well, the account goes on to say that the prophets of Baal uh, did everything back then in that scripture that they could to get their little G-O-D to respond. Um, uh, they did everything, even cutting their, their, their cells. They were cutting their cells and uh, going all through this thing just to try to get their God to show up and show out. But let me tell you something. A dead God can't respond. If you're serving a dead God, then you got the wrong one, baby. Uh-huh. You need to find the true and the living God that responds in the time of trouble uh, when, but when because when Elijah uh, called for response uh, for those of you joining in we're in first King chapter 19 hallelujah uh, when Elijah called for the response of the Lord Almighty God showed off and he showed up I'm so glad we serve a God that'll show up and then show off Woo! hallelujah he's a God that will show up and he'll show off Hallelujah. That's the type of God um, that we serve. Uh, he sent fire down and he lapped up the water around the altar. Oh my God. Elijah uh, was a, uh, 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 had a God response. I need a God response. He was, he, after that, Elijah was big man on campus, y'all. He, he had a big S on his chest. Uh, for Superman, he had, he, 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 had, he had to felt like he could leap over a wall. Hallelujah. He could outrun a speeding a train, a locomotive. Hallelujah. Uh, he could run through a troop and leap over a wall. Have you ever felt like that? I can, whoa, today has been a good day. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Then, then Elijah was amazing. He was, he was amazing. After that, I mean, during that period of time, he had to create no rain for three years. How many prophets are out there decreeing no rain? And it is so. <sighs> Uh, they don't make them like they used to. Uh-uh. He decreed. He spoke it out of his mouth. There will be no rain for three years. And there was no rain, hallelujah, until he got back down and he asked God to send the rain. Hallelujah. He was amazing. Um, when he heard the rain coming, and it did start to come, he took off running, and he ran the king. He outran the king's chariot. Hear me what I'm saying, y'all. Uh, uh, we look at uh, all these cartoon, uh, Marvel adventures, uh, characters that outrun. Imagine Elijah pulling up his robe and outrunning the king's chariots. He outran the king's chariots. Uh, and everything was just amazing about him. I have some moments. I have some moments. So, you know, I can talk about me because when I talk about you, you might get a little bit sensitive and upset. But there are moments when I feel the same way. Uh, when I have performed, uh, there have been some uh, miracles performed on my behalf. And I just thought I could beat the devil down. I just know. Come, come on, come on, bring what you got, devil, because I can beat, I feel like I can beat the devil down. I beat him, I beat him, I beat Everything's coming up, roses, I'm feeling kind of good. How you doing, sister, brother, it's good to see you. Um, and you feel like everything is going, you've been there, your bills are paid, you got money left over, your kids ain't acting stupid, your spouse is being loving, your job is okay, you're in a good season. 
Um, everything you pray uh, comes up, uh, it, it gets an answer, gets a response. Hallelujah. You pray and everything comes to pass. But, you know, and recently I had two closings in one day. And one of them, hallelujah, y'all, was mine and my husband's. That's right. Well, we were able to close on our property while we were uh, trying to close everybody else and try to help everybody else. Don't tell me God has forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. While you're doing for everybody else, God is working behind the scenes doing something for you. Hallelujah. Good Sunday morning, Linda Carter. Hallelujah. Our superwoman, wonder woman. Um, but uh, after we closed, I was feeling strong. I mean, two closings. I got another one coming up. I'm feeling strong. You know, I felt like dancing. I felt like I took a little minute to take a couple little steps in the store just to tell God thank you. I felt like singing. Uh, uh, I was secure in my anointing, ministering on Sunday, ministering on Tuesday. Oh, God, this is going to be one of those seasons, hallelujah, that I'm going to reach higher heights and deeper depths, and I'm going to hit every three-pointer that I put out there. I'm going to, Lord, this is good. And then, oh, my God, and then, and then, <laughs> and then, Understand that sometimes those moments are the eye of the storm. I was talking about a storm today, y'all. I'm still waiting for uh, the real storm. Elijah walking tall. He's out there running horses, out running horses. Uh, uh, what man do you know outruns a horse? My God. Then he hears a word from the enemy. Oh, Lord. The voice from the enemy in the voice of a woman by the name of Jezebel. Be careful who you call Jezebel. You read who Jezebel really is. Hallelujah. Read, read, read about Jezebel. Uh, he, he, Jezebel hears what, what the prophet has done on Mount Carmel, and she's furious. Uh, know this, every time you go through victories and others are celebrating you and, and applauding you and look how God has blessed you um, and he keeps using you. Listen, the enemy sees it too. He's checking you out. He's sitting on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to watch her. Somebody's watching you and waiting for the very moment, hallelujah, where you have your, your most vulnerable time when you take your eyes off of God, when you get so focused on the victories that you forget that you are a, a, an opponent uh, to the enemy. And warfare is always a moment away. Somebody say warfare is only a moment away. Warfare is only a moment away. Hallelujah. You could be peace today and in warfare um, the next day. You could have peace this moment. And by the time, my God, this, this video is done, you could be out there struggling and fighting for your life. I've done that. Been there, done that, praised, shouted my way all the way through church, lost my weave, my slip, uh, my dignity, uh, makeup smeared everywhere, lashes all over the place, hallelujah. But in the midst of it all, hallelujah, the enemy was setting me up for when I got done with all that shouting. It's like, okay, it's good when it's good, but let's see how you react in the storm. Hallelujah. So we have to always be prepared. That old slew foot devil doesn't want to see you win. Um, a lot of preachers on, t on television, now, they don't want to talk about the devil. There is a devil. There is a demon. There is a Satan that wants to kill and steal and destroy. There is. He's very real. Hallelujah. As real as there is a God in heaven, there is a devil that wants to take you out. So I talk about him because I ain't scared about him. Some of us just get scared to say what we need to say, even in public to people, hallelujah, because we're afraid of what they may think about you. But listen, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. Um, and if I do get scared, I go scared. <laughs> I will go into a situation scared. Um, but uh, 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 the, that old devil, he doesn't want to see you win. He doesn't want to see you be prosperous. He doesn't want to see you be happy. He doesn't want to see you be confident. 
And I've seen God do miracles, answer prayers one minute, the next minute, uh, just, just going from laughter, shouting, singing, to weeping, stress, pain, uh, travailing on my face, uh, just weeping and seeking God, wanting to tell customers off. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, uh, I, that, that just happened to me. Testimony, I'm telling you, I was so excited, so excited, um, you know, to close on our house. And, 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 and then the very next day, I'm telling you, I was deluged by customers. I mean, people that uh, I think should be rejoicing because I'm happy, I'm working on your behalf, but attack after attack, after attack, after the very next day, day. I could not even have an opportunity to enjoy my little victory, to enjoy my little um, answered prayer. I, I had no time. So while you're, you're celebrating and you're enjoying, the enemy is waiting to uppercut you, to kidney punch you, and to take that smile off your face. Hallelujah. But I declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Jezebel threatening uh, Elijah, he ran into the wilderness. Oh, David escaped to the cave. Uh, Elijah ran into the wilderness under a jun Jupiter tr juniper tree. He did like Peter. He took his eyes off of Jesus while, remember, Peter was on the boat and he was walking out on the water. He walked out on the water because he seen Jesus, had his eyes focused. The minute he started looking around at his circumstances and his struggles and his, and his trials and, and, and the storm, he started looking at the circumstance, the, the storm, the scenery, he began to sink. Huh. So, so that, that's a message for us to get a hold of that thing. The minute you take your eyes off of God, Hallelujah is the minute I, I, I know it is a fact. You shall begin to sink. You shall fall. So you shall fail. So we must keep our eyes on Jesus. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. No matter the victory, no matter how the defeat. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and strain your ear, strain your ear towards heaven so that you may hear the voice of the Lord in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your despair, in the middle of all of those things. Uh, no matter what's going on, God is still a promise solver, a, a promise keeper, a problem solver. No matter what's going on in this uh, pan pandemic, age, the, 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 the job loss, this hurricane, um, Isaiah, uh, you have to strain your ears and train your ears, strain your ears and train your ears and eyes towards heaven because God is still speaking. He hasn't stopped speaking. He is still speaking. Uh, the Lord is my light. That's what the word said. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear, Velvet? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength. I know I worked with that, that, that lady right there. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, whom shall I be afraid? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, who? When the wicked, even my enemies and my friends, foes came upon to eat of my flesh. They stumbled and fell, though a host shall encamp against me. Uh, in this will I be confident. Uh, if you go to, I'll keep going down the scripture, dot, 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 dot. How you doing there, Minister Ray? Uh, for in the time of trouble, uh, I brought this scripture up last week. Uh, uh, in the time of trouble, uh, the Lord shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up up on a rock. Um, um, I found that when I've tried to go into battle without the Lord, without my weapons, um, I set myself up to fail. But with God, uh, every capital letter, but with God, somebody say, but with God, but with God, I am more 
than a conqueror. Sometimes we just need a reminder of who we are. We are God's anointed. And according to the Bible, God saves his anointed. Yes, um, I believe Elijah, he was in... Um, for a sovereign moment, Elijah forgot who he was. Uh, many times we put up with far too many circumstances and issues that come into our life. We are the circumcision of God. We worship God in the spirit. Good morning, Sister Linda. Hallelujah. We worship God in the spirit. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. Thank you, Stephanie, my baby. Uh, we are a holy nation. We are the king's kids. Uh, and no weapon uh, formed against us um, shall prosper. No Jezebel, huh? no Ahab, no. No Pharaoh, no serpent, no employer, no poverty, no COVID, no racism, huh? no hurricane. How you doing, cuz? Uh, no disease, no slander shall be able to prosper against us. We are the children of God. We are the children of God. Um, huh? We are of God. Hallelujah. We are the children of God. In your struggle, you got to hear the voice of the Lord. In your juniper tree moment, hear the voice of the Lord. In your cave, hear the voice voice of the Lord. I was doing uh, <clears throat> my little um, reading plan and it was entitled last week. My plan was it was entitled the struggle is real, but it isn't permanent. Oh, that caught me. I was walking and listening to it audio style and it said the struggle is real, but it isn't permanent. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't going through. Oh my God, I can give you, I can give you documented evidence that it was true. I can give you eyewitness accounts that it is true. You are going through. But the good news is trouble don't last always. This too shall pass. Hallelujah. We are, hallelujah, going to get through this. We shall win. We shall be victorious. We shall overcome. Oh, we shall. I heard my ancestors say, we shall overcome someday. Hallelujah. We shall make it out of this. This struggle is in my imagination that I can cast down. It's real. Your diagnosis is real. Your bankruptcy was real. Your divorce was real. Your child in jail was real. But no weapon. It's temporary, Gary. It's temporary. Elijah the Tishbet hid under the juniper tree. He was suicidal. The Bible says that he didn't want to live anymore. The juniper tree was frequently used by desert travelers as a refuge from scorching sun. And when the heat is turned up on us, listen very carefully, we choose to hide in and under anything that may be available. That was available for Elijah. So he got up under the juniper tree. And sometimes when the heat is turned up, we choose to hide under some, uh, I'm gonna say it right now, weed. Maybe there's a different word for it now. Weed, alcohol, a stranger's arms. We hide behind anger because it's our defense mechanism that we've had all of our life. And it's convenient to grab a hold of that anger and explode on someone. We hide under those things, but he that dwelleth in the secret place, hallelujah, oh, I'm making myself happy. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I will say of the Lord, uh, he is my refuge uh, and my fortress, uh, my God, in him will I trust. Uh, another scripture goes on to say, some trust in chariots and, and some in horses, uh, but I will remember the name of the Lord, our God. Hallelujah. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. 
refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. No hiding place like the loving arms of a father. He will cover you with his feathers. If you need to hide out for a little bit while you catch your breath, and sometimes you just got to catch your breath. Sometimes it comes too quickly to you. Sometimes you can't keep, uh, you both stop. Sometimes you can't keep control. Sometimes it's just, it's just hard. Hallelujah. But if you need to hide, hide underneath the, the blood of Jesus um, and watch the death angel um, uh, keep on going past him. The Lord said, Elijah, the Tishbit, he sent the angel of the Lord. He sent an angel to, to minister to him and give him substance in the wilderness. And after Elijah did eat, the Bible says he went to sleep. Um, and, and, and then the angel woke him up again. And then he again, he ate again. And uh, uh, the angel, actually, the words were, arise and eat. And he arose and he eat. And he rose and he eat. Eat that word. No matter how dark, I'm here to tell you, every time there's a word from the Lord, arise and eat. Today, I am saying, arise and eat. Hallelujah. Arise and eat. No matter how dark, arise and eat. Even if you don't feel hungry. Uh, parents used to say, uh, no, you're going to eat now because uh, you're going to be hungry. You may not be hungry now, but you'll be hungry later. You're going to eat this spaghetti. You're going to eat this fried chicken right now because uh, I want to clean up after whatever. But you better eat now. Eat now because you don't know when the next time it is you will get that rhema word that's going to help you through the next situation. Elijah got up and he didn't eat after that for 40 days. Eat because you don't know how long you're going to, to go to need to go without. In your darkest hour, you may have to pull on the word that you heard a month ago. I have pieces of paper and tablets and, and little handwritings and typings um, that I have that, that God sent prophetic word to me over my life. And sometimes I got to pull that out. Woo! And I'm just so renewed. You got to dig up the old wells, y'all, sometimes. Good morning, Miss Norma. Hallelujah. Dig them up. Hallelujah. Elijah goes from the juniper tree to a cave and God speaks that's the cave experience God speaks uh, God passes by here it is here's the crux of the message God passes by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces that's what the scripture said today uh, before the Lord but the Lord uh, wasn't in the wind he's not in the the wind. He's not in the wind. And then an earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And then the virus. <laughs> not in the virus. And then the hurricane. He not he wasn't in the hurricane. We looking for God in all the wrong forms and shapes. After the earthquake there was a fire, but God was not in the the fire. And some of you are saying here today, where is God now? Where, where is he? Where, where is God now? Where is he while I'm in the cave? Where is he? I'm looking for him. I'm straining my ears to hear God, but you're looking for a familiar way that he comes to you in the past, but God is doing new things. He's training us to hear him in any kind of way that he speaks. Um, Elijah, like ourselves, are so used to drama and a lot of in, in living color miracles. Yeah, but God doesn't always show up in, in a living color miracle. He's not always going to let somebody blow on you and you fall out in the presence of the Lord. Uh, he's not always going to send a pro prophet that is going to give you a word of knowledge and then a word of wisdom and then the prophetic forward moving word. He's not always going to do that. Elijah was probably looking for God to throw boltning lights from, from uh, bolt, lightning bolts from the sky at Jezebel and there was no drama. He, it was no drama. He lost heart. It's like, okay, God, where are you? Because I don't see you like I normally see you. I don't see you working like you normally work. Uh, you, something has changed. Maybe you're not there at all, but every now and then, God sneaks into a room, and before you know it, his spirit overtakes 
you and then you can't understand where'd you come from God oh my god I thought I was gonna lose it I thought I was gonna die I was ready to give up I was ready to throw in the towel uh, sometimes he speaks uh, through the fire yes he does uh, I want God to ride up on it well let me be transparent um, I'm gonna say this sometimes I want him to ride up on a white horse and wipe out everybody that's ever hurt me uh, whether I've forgiven them or not I uh, hurt them all just do it wipe them out that's just me. I'm not using you as an example, uh, but just me. Every now and then, somebody really trips my trigger, and I just want God to come and deal with it in the presence of, so I can see it. So I can see it. Lord, show them that we're wrong. Show them that I am your anointed. Show them, oh God, that I, I love you and that I need to be respected and loved. Lord God, every now and then, I want God to show up just like that. But he has an answer to my problems and he will deal with my adversaries in his own way. We have to learn how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I've learned in desperate situations that I want to, that I need to hear God and I need him to do whatever he does the best way he knows how to do it. Amen. That we know how uh, he, we don't have to figure it out. He has it already figured out. I, I, I've learned just to listen to him that, that whatever he does is okay. Any way you bless me, God, I'm satisfied, but I need to hear his voice. I don't care what language you're speaking in, God. I don't care. I just need you to speak. I, I if, if it's a one word, Lord, I'll take, yeah, oh, I'll take one word. I will take one word and ride on that thing um, as long as it's necessary. Uh, I need to hear his voice when I'm tired and ready to give up. Hallelujah. I need to hear his voice when I am struggling, hallelujah, I need to hear his, I'm just talking about me, y'all. I might not, maybe you don't need him like I do, but I need to hear his voice when I'm hurting and when I'm vulnerable. But I also need to hear his voice when I'm happy. <laughs> I just need to know he's there. Uh, I, want, I want you to learn, people of God, how to recognize the voice of God in the cave, in your struggle, in the storm. Uh, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. A stranger they will not follow. So even if God is speaking in Spanish, if you know him, you know his voice. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're familiar with him and you spend time with him. That's how we learn the voice of God. Uh, uh, people know my voice. I call them. I don't have to say, this is Frida. You know, I don't have to say that to my sisters and my brothers and my mom or people that talk to me all the time. I don't have to announce myself. They, and, and even without caller ID, I would believe <laughs> that, that they know my voice because they have been familiar with me. I would hope that my husband, Eugene, when I call, he's not going to say, well, who is this? Who is this? And so we got to get familiar with the voice of God. Hallelujah. However he speaks, if he speaks in Spanish, if he speaks in French, if he speaks in whatever, learn to train your ear because that is the thing. Somebody could be speaking and you don't hear them. Uh, they could speak and you don't hear. But I, I got to let you go because my time is up. But I, I just want you to know uh, we're so desperate to hear something. I, I need you. Somebody, I was talking to someone last week about uh, they was, you know, to God was telling them to turn off, turn off the voices, turn off the voices. And I, I just want to close with um, with prayer and and this song. Uh, if if <clears throat> if you are without Christ and you don't know Him as your personal Savior, uh, now is a good time to do that. Now now is a good time to do that. I don't know what your scenario or situation, but just Please pray with me, dear Lord. 
I am a sinner and I heard that you are a savior. I heard that you came to earth, you died on the cross, buried and was rose again. You said, if I believe in my heart, confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that I shall be saved. Save me today. Save me today. I don't fully understand what salvation is about, but teach me. I am willing to be taught. God, I thank you for coming into my life, even on today. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, I believe you saved today. Um, I, I ask God to bless each and every one of you to keep you. Uh, this song here, it's an old hymn from the church. Yeah. And this is being sung today by um, Dewey Smith. Forgive me, me I cannot stray. This is the one my first pastor no, passed for the longest time. This was his favorite let hymn. Me walk, let me walk each day with me. Sing in your living room, wherever you're at. Ask him to lead me, guide me along the way. Along the way. For if you lead me, if you lead me, then I stray. Bring back the old hymn. over us night and day, and we promise to give you the praise in Jesus' name.
Cash App, Roma Side for your boy. Hallelujah. thirsty, hungry for the word. It's out there. I love you. How you doing, Holly? My cousin, Holly. How you all? Have a great day, and you all be blessed. Stay safe. Stay well. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Love you, Shore.